It's time now for our Wall Street Week Daily. The Federal Reserve's top bank regulator, Michael Barr, acknowledging some oversight lapses ahead of Silicon Valley Bank's failure in today's hearing before Congress. So to help us break down what went wrong, how deregulation might have played a big role, let's bring in Dennis Kelleher, the CEO of Better Markets. Dennis, um, I'm curious because I know you've been listening very carefully to the two days of testimony and hearings and the back and forth. What surprised you the most? What, did you hear anything that truly surprised you? Well, I'll tell you, I was pretty encouraged to see that uh, uh, the congressmen, the senators on both sides of the aisle, Republicans and Democrats, uh, took this very seriously. They understand the consequential nature of these issues. And I have to say, normally there's a lot of partisan sniping and sound bites and unhelpful commentary. You saw very little of that. And that's a very encouraging sign. So hopefully they can continue that, although I must say this is the easy part of the analysis. It gets much tougher from here out, but it's a very good start, and people should be encouraged by the way that their representatives acted so far. All right. That, that's, that's certainly encouraging, and it's not every day that you hear that the lawmakers in, on Capitol Hill are, are doing well and, and uh, being measured in how they question uh, witnesses. I do wonder, though, given the backdrop of their arguments, uh, Republicans point the finger at unprecedented fiscal stimulus under the Biden administration for fueling inflation that's required the Federal Reserve to take action with interest rate increases, mm -hmm. uh, aggressive rate hikes at that, while the Democrats, of course, say that it's the 2018 rollback or watering down of Dodd Frank that led to banks like SVB taking these unnecessary risks. Um, how do you grade either side argument? Well, you know, uh, there's a measure of uh, truth and accuracy on, on all the criticisms, and there's plenty of blame to go around. Uh, first and foremost, the directors and officers at, at Silicon Valley Bank and the other banks were grossly irresponsible, reckless, and frankly, we're going to find out if they actually engaged in illegal conduct, which may well have happened here. So number one, they're at fault. But that behind that and actually enabling that was the fact that the financial industry was significantly unleashed, unsupervised, and unpoliced in a massive deregulation project ushered in by President Trump. He picked regulators who were going to deregulate, mm -hmm. and Chairman Powell at the Fed with Vice Chairman Quarles engaged in massive deregulation during their four years. Yes, it was supplemented by a law that was passed in 2018, and a lot of people like to focus on that law. But if you focus on that, you're missing the deregulatory forest for one tree. And so we had massive deregulation of the banks. And the problem is when you do that, you disempower the supervisors. And you make supervision much, much more difficult. And that's what happened here, um, at least based on what we know so far. Yeah. So the real tragedy would be if they start blaming and scapegoating the line supervisors without dealing with the fundamental issues that enabled it, which are the policies driven by the Federal Reserve Board in Washington. But it's not just the Federal Reserve that regulates the banking industry, is it? You also have the FDIC represented in the hearings the last two days, as well as uh, Treasury. What are their roles compared with the Federal Reserve in allowing this to happen? Well, Treasury is really there because of their role once things need to be bailed out or rescue measures have to be undertaken. Um, the Federal Reserve is the primary and eight, primary supervisor, and they're the 800-pound gorilla. They have responsibility to make sure Silicon Valley Bank and the other big banks in the United States are operated in a safe and sound manner and don't threaten financial stability. So they are the ones on the, they are the tip of the spear mm -hmm. to protect the American people. Behind them is the FDIC, but they're significantly behind them. But you're right, multiple regulators failed here, including the California regulators. But the Federal Reserve is the one out front, and the Federal Reserve conduct is the one that really needs to be aggressively scrutinized. So does the Federal Reserve's role as bank regulator need to be sp split off from the Federal Reserve as central bank uh, with its dual mandate of ensuring full employment and limiting inflation? You know, people should look at that very closely. Their supervision responsibilities are often at tension with their other activities, including monetary policy. But I'll tell you, Scarlett, you know, I worked in very senior positions in the United States Senate for a number of years, including during the 2008 crash when this issue was revisited because the Fed failed miserably before the 2008 crash. Yeah. And the Fed's dereliction back then helped facilitate the 2008 crash. And here we are 15 years later, we're going to be revisiting many of the same issues and whether or not 
the Federal Reserve should have these multiple hats that are often at tension with each other. Right, right. But none of that, that's down the road. People need to focus on what we can do now. And what they should do now is very quickly reverse some of the deregulation that was undertaken at the Fed and the FDIC. And that could cause an immediate help to stabilize the system and to rebuild, re start rebuilding confidence in the right. system. And that's why Better Markets put out the report we put out to really lay out how the deregulation brought us here yeah. and how re-regulation can get us back to where we need to be. I appreciate the simple fix that you've proposed here. One of our guests told us, and it's my favorite quote of the week, that every day that there isn't a bank failure is a good day. And we've had that for a few days now. Markets obviously have short memories. Do you worry that a few days of calm have reduced the urgency to make changes at the policy level, such as you said, like reverse some of the deregulatory actions that have been taken in recent years? You know, you've really put your finger on a huge problem, which is often what you need to do in a panic is to address the drivers of the panic and actually cause the panic to be um, lessened. The problem is, as you reduce the, the concern and the level of panic, you also reduce the ability to get people to focus to make fundamental changes that need to be done so these things don't happen again. And so we do have to, um, you know, take some comfort and we do have to take the actions in eliminating panics and bank failures. At the same time, we've got to have the political will yeah. and we've got to be able to fight the lobbyists to make the tough changes that we have to make. Otherwise, we're going to be in this cycle where we have periods of time where things are quiet and calm. Then we have crisis. We, we take extraordinary actions that actually just lay the seeds of the next crisis. And, and you might remember, and I'm sure you do, Scarlett, because you were there, 15 years ago, Bear Stearns fall uh, collapsed in March of 2008. Yeah. We had many months of quiet, and then Lehman Brothers collapsed in September and ignited a massive Absolutely. global crash. No, and so, that's, that's what markets and investors are, are so tentative about this period of calm. We all have long memories when it comes to uh, what could happen next. Dennis, really appreciate your joining us. Dennis Kelleher is Better Markets CEO. And of course, a reminder that you can catch highlights from all of our conversations every Friday on Wall Street Week at 6 p.m. New York time. Katie.